For those who are familiar with our video series, each one we invite one of our professional partners to come and share with us their insights on immigration to Ireland. So today we are very pleased to have Mr. Kenneth Yeo, a senior accountant and tax advisor from China Consulting Consortium, to share with us the matters of things like income tax, capital gain tax, and so on. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Bartra, for inviting me to be here. So if there are any clients of yours who would like to know about Irish tax in the course of their application to go to Ireland, I'll be happy to help them. So for those who are immigrating or planning to immigrate to Ireland to work, they have to know the income tax in Ireland is between 20 to 40 percent. But is that true for the salaries or investment income or any profits made domiciles overseas also taken into account? In general, there are two income tax rates in Ireland. Uh, the basic tax rate is 20% and the higher tax rate is 40 In general, if a couple earns more than, let's say, 70,000 euros, uh, anything above that would be subject to 40%. Anything be be below 70,000 euros would, be would be taxed at 20%. Uh, regarding other investment incomes like dividends, interest, they will be aggregated together with your salaries and the aggregated amount uh, would be taxed accordingly. Regarding uh, income from abroad, i.e. Uh, in jurisdictions outside Ireland, as long as the uh, income from overseas is not remitted back to Ireland, uh, then there will not be any tax on the foreign income. And on interest from insurance, on the payouts from annuities included within? The tax laws on insurance products can be very uh, complex and complicated. Uh, it would depend on the terms of the insurance products. Uh, in general, if the interest uh, is payable uh, during the life of the insurance products, the interest uh, would be subject to tax. Again, this will be aggregated with the salaries and taxed accordingly. If the interest and uh, other payments are accrued within the insurance products and those amounts are payable on death or after death to the beneficiaries, then it's very likely that those payments would be exempt from tax. So there's lots of questions surrounding capital gain tax as well, from which we know it's 33%. So for example, when you sell a property, obviously you have to pay for the capital gain tax, CGT. But what about land, shares and vineyard? In tax terms, we call it capital versus revenue. Uh, capital meaning if you buy something for investment purposes, whether it's shares, uh, houses, and if you sell it uh, at a later date and make a gain, those gains would be subject to capital gain tax. Whereas if you are buying something for trading purposes, uh, you do it uh, on a regular basis, then the tax authorities would normally treat those transactions as uh, what they call uh, a revenue nature and therefore they will be taxed uh, at the income tax uh, regime. The majority of our clients are thinking about immigration to Ireland is for the future of their children. So we understand that the children are entitled to inherit up to 310,000 euro tax free and after that it's 33% charge. So what roles does life insurance or trust can play under the Irish inheritance tax regime? There are two questions here. Question number one is the life insurance products. How does it help uh, for the second or third generation to inherit uh, properties from their parents, grandparents? Right. As far as the life insurance uh, is concerned, because most of the government would like to encourage uh, the life insurance industry and therefore there are some products 
the payout would be exempt from tax if the payout is received by the second or the third generation, i.e. not the insurer. The second question is about trust. Uh, the trust concept is that the legal ownership of the properties do not belong to the settler, i.e. To the, to the donor. They belong to the trustees. So what we do uh, is that before anybody moving to Ireland will create a trust. Uh, what the trust can, can, can hold, the trust can actually hold properties, cash, uh, shares, bonds, anything, you name it. So with all that being said, I think what makes our program attractive is IIP offers flexibilities. People stay less than 183 days in Ireland. They are non-taxable residents. Also, the investment return from our IIP nursing home projects, the investors can also receive around 200,000 euro. It's also tax-free. I think one of the major things Hong Kong immigrants would like to learn about is property tax. So for a residential property, the price is less than 1 million euro, it's 1%, and it's 7.5% for commercial properties. But is there any tax difference for a foreigner, a Stanford visa holder, and a citizen for buying a property in Ireland? In fact, there would be no difference between Stanford visa holder and a non-resident uh, who are buying properties in Ireland. The reason is that the transaction actually takes place in Ireland and therefore there will be no difference between uh, the two categories of people in terms of paying stamp duties and capital gain tax if they sell their properties in future. So what do you think people need to keep in mind when it comes to budgeting of the property tax in Ireland? If any of your clients, whether they are Irish residents or uh, Hong Kong residents, when they are buying properties in Ireland, uh, consider using a foreign company, i.e. a non-Irish company, to hold the properties. Uh, that would save some of their stamp duty in the future when they sell the properties and also there may be opportunities or may, there may be scope of not paying capital gain tax. Once again, thank you very much Kenneth for joining us.